I'm going to show you some updates to using warping helpers, particularly if you have a baby wolf loom. In the past, when I've put on these pieces, I didn't have rubber bands on them. I recently found out that Shat now sends rubber bands because sometimes they wobble and when you go to put your rattle on, it falls off and all sorts of things happen. So first of all, whatever you're doing, if you have a holder like that to hold uh, your rattle on, I suggest using rubber bands. Now the second thing that I've decided to do, and it works much better, the first thing I'm going to do, now if you notice my warping helpers, let me uh, kind of move the camera a little bit, are purple. Yes, the ones that I do sell are white, the, this one's actually my prototype that wasn't quite long enough, so I don't have it totally hung, uh, attached to the front beam, which you can do on baby wolves with the newer one. And this one, it's a little different, and I decided to try coloring it just for fun. So if you decide you do want to color yours, you can dye it. They're cotton. Now, the other thing I do now is I hang my warping helpers on first. Next, I'm going to put the lee sticks in. I'm not quite sure. I've done it many different ways. And I'm going to put the one lee stick in here. And I happen to like to push the machine screw down and then into the hole and then snap it. It doesn't matter. You can do it either way. And I'm going to take the other one and again put the machine screw in there, put it through the grommet, and snap it. So now I have the one lee stick in and I'm gonna do the other one. So I'm gonna take the other one, and again, separate it. Of course, this is kind of hard to see. I have a black warp, and I'm using some of the old black stockings I have. I'm gonna, again, pop that in there, put it in the machine in the uh, grommet, snap it in, take the other one, pop it in the hole, and snap it in. All right, so now we have that set up at the moment and I'm now ready to attach the bars that I have uh, attached. If you have whatever type of loom you have, this one doesn't have an apron, but if you had an apron, you might have a rod going through here and then you have, or in this case, I have all these cords that are in the way. So what I like to do is I like to attach another a bar. Now you could use wood to whatever you have to this. So then when I put my lee stick or I put the uh, the yarn in, I don't have anything in the way. And you also can get a little bit closer maybe to your weaving. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I do have to uh, take this off. So I'm going to disconnect the one end, slide it in, and I do like a little half hitch over the end. Now we have that attached. And I'm going to just break it a little bit here. I'm going to put it here. One nice thing, I can just pause that on there. I'm going to step around and wind this up a little bit. I want to release my break. I'm going to wind it just a little bit. I don't have my rattle on yet. So I have that just about uh, there. All right, now I'm going to kind of take this on the other side. Just let it hang a little bit. I don't want to go too far because the problem is that this could weigh, I don't have it spread out yet. I didn't want to quite go that far yet, uh, but that could hang on. I can put my rattle on now if I want to, but you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to put the rattle, I'm going to take the ties off, all the ties, because what I'd like to do before I put my rattle on, if you have the, the uh, if you can do that, it's just nice to be able to spread out your warp and then put the rattle on underneath. Again, that's just a new method that I've discovered that works pretty well. So I'm gonna take this, it's nice, it's resting right on here. I'm gonna spread it out. 
not totally the way it's going to be, but enough to have it pretty well balanced. The idea is the bar, this bar, when it goes down, it's gonna be a little, kind of balanced a little bit. This happens to be, again, a hand-dyed warp. And so I had it spread out just a little bit on that area. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take the rattle, I'm gonna hold this bar, I'm gonna slide it in there. I'm gonna take the rattle, put it over the one end and the other end. I might need to adjust it just a little bit. Move it out, up, wiggle that little guy in there. Okay, now I have the rattle and things are still dangling a little bit, but it's fairly balanced. I'm gonna bring this out here a little bit more. Now, the problem now is that I have all these in the way. If you have a way of covering them up, it's gonna make it even a little bit easier to spread them out a little bit more. Now the shot has a bar that goes over top of the rattle. So what you could do if you have this, or maybe you could use uh, cardboard rolls or something, you can put that on the top. Now I'm gonna go around and wind it on a little bit more. And if I want to, I could literally spread this out a little bit more. It's a lot easier to spread it out over top of the rattle when there's something over it. You're not getting caught in all of it each time. And what I do, you can see, I group my warp into sections of, of inches because this rattle happens to be in inches. This is a 12, it's 12 ends per inch and I have 15 of them, and I have them in groups, which will make it much easier when I start putting them in each little section here. And even now, like I said, I can start spreading these out because it's gonna make my life so much easier when we actually do the warping. So right now, you can see it's starting to spread out, and it's nice to do maybe a little bit on one end, and then again, go to the other end, because what happens is that Again, you have this, these bars underneath, and if you have too many on one side, yes, that bar will just slide out. How do I know? Yep, it has happened. Again, all of these things that, that, I'm, that I show on all different videos and so on are after many, many trials and errors, and you don't always see, I don't record all the oopsies that happen, but sometimes they do happen. And they still happen, even after 30 some years of weaving and, and putting on warps, we often, we can still have a, uh-oh, what did I, what was I thinking? So right now, oh, put that over. So right now, it's kind of nicely spread out pretty much, but it's still a little catawonk here. I can see that's happening. So I'm going to, again, go over and I'm going to wind that on a little bit more. Okay, so there we are. And now, now it's time to take this off, the cover off. And when you're finished, the idea is also to put this back on so when you're winding on, nothing will pop out and over that and in this case this is a 15 15 inches and this is the center if you have a shat loom you realize that the center isn't really in the center this is centered into the middle here but there's these little clips on the head on the shafts that really are off center so technically this is middle, so it would be 15, and I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now that's where I wanna be because, like I said, this is a 15 with pattern. So I'm gonna take the first 15, and like I said, I have that nice little grouping of already of 12. I'm gonna take the next one, all of these go over there. 
and easy. Again, I don't know if you can see it, but the next group. So right now, each little group is coming across very nicely. So let's go the other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is actually where I want to be. So I'm gonna gently move these over. And the first one, all 12 of those go in there. Those 12 are already in there. The next 12, I have a little more than I want on that one. The next 12, looks like the next 12 are, oh, wait a minute, maybe they're not quite. All right, so we have, this is a 12 in here. And next grouping of 12 should go in here. And we know that one's gonna go over. And I'm gonna go back to the other side, see how are things going here. That's 12, 12 threads. All of those go in there. The next group, I'm not sure if you can see the ties, but that's what I'm doing. I'm taking each group and separating them, or they're already separated. Over here, and I think, all right, so now we're right smack in the middle one. So I'm gonna go in and I can go to the least sticks and separate that one. So we will have half on the one side of that middle middle one. Again, on the shot rattles, they have the very middle one is black. Now, the next thing I might want to do, many people, I want to come down underneath and again, start to spread these out. So on the bar that I have, again, so they'll wind on nice and neatly. Again, I'm spreading them out down here. And I'm almost ready to start winding. I'm gonna go to the other end over here. Kind of hard to see what's happening. There we go. So your everything is pretty much spread out as much as you can, and you can also tweak it later on. And now it's time to start winding on. I'm just gonna do a little bit and pause because this is a demonstration of how to use. The, so I go all the way around, I get to about there, and of course what I'm going to do is I do need to undo all of these to spread them out, and I also have to put my cardboard or roll of paper, whatever it is that you're using. So it's time to spread all of those out. And sometimes I will do both ends. And I also, whenever I do the groupings, I like to make sure I do a color that's different than the warp. Now, in this case, you can see where all those were tied or looped together and the dye didn't quite take it. And that happens sometimes. So now, everything, as soon as I get that last one out of there, and the one on this end. Okay, now they are all spread out. And what I often will do is I will go to the other side of the loom and I will give it a little shake. And then I will continue winding on the warp. And I hope you enjoyed watching that. And if you like my slippers, I can tell you where to get those.